episode of FinTech Focus TV with me, Toby Babb. And today we are continuing our series of speaking to some of the most influential FinTechs of 2021 as listed by the Financial Technologist magazine. One of those companies is a company that I absolutely love. It is one of the best kept secrets of the uh, financial technology space. Some may be saying Volantic Who. I'm going to be saying you're going to be hearing an awful lot more about them over the course of the next couple of years, particularly under the stewardship of Peter Hongren. Peter Hongren, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Toby. It's an absolute pleasure. Listen, great to see you on the show. And uh, we've been talking a lot over the last few months and, and I've been seeing this sort of uh, rapid acceleration of the business over here in the UK. I've mentioned best kept secrets before, so I'm going to pass it over to you to give us a bit of background about it. Peter, first and foremost, before we really get to dig into everything, can you give us a bit of background about yourself and then give us a, a little bit more about Volantic FSA as well, please? Yes, of course. So, uh, so my name is Peter. I've been in the financial industry for quite a while. Uh, <laughs> I started my, uh, my career in, in, in the fintech space by joining Jewelink back in Paris, that was back in the days <laughs> when we were only 47 people. And yeah. then we grew quite quickly and uh, I stayed there for almost, almost seven years. Uh, grew from sales into uh, Managed Director UK, then gone into Managed Director EMEA for, for Jewelink. I then uh, moved on to join Fidesa, where I uh, run Fidesa's new business as uh, regional sales manager EMEA for Fidesa. I uh, then moved on to Valantic. I joined Valantic, uh, especially Valantic Who. <laughs> I joined them uh, now eight months ago, and uh, it's a very, very interesting company. Uh, to give you a little bit of background, Valantic Group is actually one of the uh, fastest growing fintechs in, in, in the DAC region, which is the German speaking world, uh, part of the world. And uh, we are today uh, just above 1300 people. Uh, within the group. Uh, the financial uh, financial technologies arm, which is the Valantic FSA arm, are today 330 people. And, uh, and we are uh, growing out of Germany, uh, sprung out of the, uh, the DAC region, as, as I said before. Uh, we are, um, how shall I say, we are the industry challenger when it comes to the fixed income trading platform, I would say. Even though we've been around for a while, we have the right uh, combination of the next generation technology and that combined with the right people of capital market knowledge. We offer uh, full coverage when it comes to uh, the D2D and D2C uh, trading platform, when it comes to credit rates, swaps, repos, uh, CFDs, et cetera, et cetera. We offer uh, off-the-shelf gateways, uh, over 50 off-the-shelf gateways for uh, finding liquidity for both D2D and D2C. Uh, we have a proven track record when it comes to our technology, which is used by some of the big boys in the industry. Uh, some of them are, of course, JP Morgan and Unicredit. Uh, we are driving innovation, but most importantly, I would say we are a true partner to our clients, where we work in a true partnership with a very flexible commercial model and a proven delivery process. And it's, and it's a really interesting piece for you to come into. I mean, I've, I've been talking to you, as I say, for the last few months about this. And, and, I, and every time I, I speak to you, I see this sort of broad grin come across your face about the excitement, about the uh, scale and potential of opportunity uh, here. Tell me a little bit about your, you know, as you say, it's not, it's not long to be in a new position, seven, eight months or so. Yes. So I've, I've rarely seen you and I've known you for a long time. I've rarely seen you as, as excited about anything um, as, you, as you are about the sort of scale and scope of this opportunity. Yes, yeah, uh, and that's that comes from a very excitable person. Full, full stop. So, so, it's, uh, <laughs> so, so when we look at this, we're talking fever pitch. And you, and you mentioned there about the scale. You mentioned there about the, the sort of you know sleeping giant that sort of sat there with with so, with so much already behind it. Mm. This has got a platform to really do some you know revolutionary things to the, to the industry. Tell us a little bit about what really sort of influenced you to 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 go from you know, one of the behemoths of the industry that you've, uh, you've, you've been in before to coming and taking this little opportunity, which is taking something from, which has got huge potential from scratch here in the UK and be able to grow it into something which I think you're, you know, you're as excited as, as you've ever been about anything. Yeah, that's the that's the that's the interesting part of 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 the role that I've taken on board. Of course, first of all, uh, the Valantic who uh, came a little bit from uh, the fact that. Um, I've been privileged a lot uh, to work in this industry for a very long time, uh, working with brilliant people, uh, inventing, moving forward, and and doing whatever they can to help their clients. And um, 
a very dear friend of mine reached out one day and said, Peter, um, if you are not happy where you're at, <laughs> um, you should, uh, I should introduce you to a company called Valantic. And th th that's where the phrase came from. Valantic who? I said to him, <laughs> <laughs> who are you talking about? And um, I um, got um, introduced to Joachim, which is our uh, division CEO. And we started talking and uh, unfolded in front of me, uh, in front of my eyes was a vision uh, of, sorry, my language here, a non-bullshit vision <laughs> where actually uh, interesting technology, uh, interesting people, excellent people, uh, people that really wants to work with our clients, helping them, uh, bringing the best to their, their workflows and actually solving their problems, not forcing something onto them, but actually working with them. That combined with uh, a technology that is well proven, uh, covering both pricing, quoting and, and trading within the most, uh, how shall I say, demanding D2D and D2C uh, workflows or markets, mm -hmm. Uh, with new technology that we bring to the to the, the to the to the market, uh, where we open up our own technology with uh, a mesh layer, uh, allowing us to actually centralize data and become extremely data driven. Mm. So when I started discovering that, and uh, I s discussed with Joachim and and, and the team, and uh, the more I poked into the to the company, the the more excited I became, and uh, and. Um, Today, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's being part of uh, an established company with a startup mentality that actually wants to do things. And, and yeah. that is exciting. That is exciting. I think that, I think that's, that puts the, the, the sort of nail in, 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 on, you know, on the head there, hits the nail on the head there, doesn't it? When you talk about an established business with a startup mentality, hmm. that is, that's such an exciting position to be in because it gives you the opportunity to... Uh, you know, to, to, to have all of that buzz, all of that excitement, all of that, that sort of potential and opportunity of, of the startup with the backing of something that's proven. And the market share that you've already got in, in Germany is phenomenal, right? And yes. so the ability to come in there and challenge and disrupt in, 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 a, in a huge market here in the UK is also a tremendously, or presents a tremendous opportunity as well, right? So it's yeah. a, it, it, it develops itself into into a stunning opportunity in a business there that, that sort of I think becomes very compelling to people who you, you've been talking to. But moving into a new business and a startup business, particularly during a pandemic, can have its challenges as as, as well. And uh, oh, definitely, yeah. I, I remember, uh, and, I, and I've seen some of the posts that you've been putting out there about uh, your on onboarding journey. Uh, and it is difficult. Look, we're going through it ourselves at the moment. We've, we've had two people start today. And, and it is definitely, I can uh, fully say, a lot easier to embed someone into a business when they're physically there and, 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 in, and in position. Yeah. Let alone to do it in a startup mentality where you're, you're selling a new product into a new area with, with, of course, high potential. But to be doing it into a place where you can't uh, meet and see and feel your customers at the same sort, same sort of stage. So you're um, uh, so I'm really interested. But the, the fact is, is that hasn't held you back, and, and if anything, it's only accelerated things for you. Yeah. So I'm really, really interested to take. So and, and this show has always been about sort of taking the, the lessons, the opportunities, and, and turning the, the negative into a positive. Tell us a little bit about your journey so far over the last seven, eight months or so. Tell us a little bit about the onboarding process. Tell us a little bit about what it's been like in the trenches. Uh, starting something, starting something up, um, you know, in a completely remote and, and disjointed and disorganized, well, not disorganized, but um, disorganized dis world. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a disorganized world, right? It's it's, yes. it's a very very difficult thing to to do, and to to miss the, you know, you you're starting without the trade shows, without the ability to network, without the you know all of these sort of things. But you you pivoted it in a magical way, and you you're really making marketing work for you. You've got some great allies and partners who I know you're working with with, with all of that as well. Yeah. And you've got a completely, you know, it's it sort of by necessity fashion something that I think is really, really impressive and really, really exciting for how you take that market on and showcase the business for it. Give us a, a little bit of a, a, an overview of, of what you've picked up, what you've learned and, and how you've managed to make this successful in, in challenging so, circumstances. 
Yeah, so it, it, it has been, but I think it's been uh, it's been challenging for us all. It's been Absolutely. it's been a it's been a tough journey, as to say, <laughs> but uh, a tough journey also open up. I've always been of the of the of the mentality that if you have a challenging in front of you, a challenge in front of you, well, uh, that also open up a couple of opportunities actually. And as I said to you before, Toby, I, I've been privileged, uh, very privileged, to be in this industry for a while, so. I can actually pick up the phone and, and call people and ask for help. And uh, that's what I've done. I've reached out to my contacts uh, and asked them for help. Uh, and I also had uh, the opportunity where uh, we were transitioning our company. Uh, Valantic FSA is, is now transitioning into the new Valantic FSA. We've, uh, we had opportunity to work on the website. We're coming out with a new website, uh, new documentation, and uh, and that really helps and that mot motivates you because when you take on a new role, just as a as as a sales or project management or or, or anything, um, any any uh, particular role, uh, which is very defined, it's uh, it it might be harder. Uh, mm -hmm. The luxury I had was that my role is not really defined it's like take us out and make us known in the industry uh, take our technology and bring it bring it to the market and having a german engineering of technology behind you when you go to market is quite comfortable it's like driving <laughs> uh, driving the the best beamer you got out there right it's uh, <laughs> it's it's you know it works and when you do that, it's, you're always comfortable to go and talking, talking to clients. Of course, we will change ways that the software operates, the, the changes that we will find on, on, on especially the, the evolution of the market, right? The evolution of the market has been going electronic for a while. Uh, coming into the fixed income space, it feels a little bit like you're back uh, when the equity market went electronic. Exactly. There, there's still, there, there is don't get me wrong, it's electronic, uh, but there is still workflows that you can address. And there is still a need in the market of actually looking at how to digitize and to automate those workflows uh, and bringing, uh, sorry, I'm going passionate on you again, Toby. That's great, that's what I, want, that's what I love to see. You see my smile across my face at the moment. Look, this is what I love. This is the box office Peter Holmgren that we wanted to see. <laughs> but bringing those uh, bringing those workflows to work in harmony with the person rather than trying to replace something bring it to it actually works for you yeah rather than work against you and and that's what we're trying to do and and the, the privilege that we have is to be able to work with technology allowing us to automate workflows that today are heavily manual so they take time so we automate them for a trader so he's notified when something happens, he has the right data in front of him. We're bringing uh, our old Java uh, screen into an HTML5 UI. Uh, by doing so, we are applying an application layer. And that suddenly then brings up uh, a whole new level of data centricity yeah. and uh, optimization. And, and doing so, suddenly you can have flow from multiple system just running into one in an aggregated view in one single screen, independently where the data sits. Are we there yet? No, but are we on the journey? Definitely. Absolutely. So, so that's, that's, uh, that's where we're going. And, and, and that's what's so exciting about Valantic. Yeah, and I think that that sort of that sort of scale of opportunity is really, you know, obviously energizing, um, you know, to anyone coming into the business, and you can clearly see it sort of coursing through you and and the way it, you, you you sort of express that story as well. I think it's um, I think it's really interesting what you were just talking about there because this, you know, whilst whilst everything negative that we can say about the uh, the pandemic, it's also given us the opportunity to sort of look and reflect and and and. Uh, look for efficiencies in the way that we take and do things a bit differently so yeah. there's there's an old um story that i've heard a few times by one of the former england rugby managers who talks about the opportunity to sort of take a house take everything out of it and put it outside on the front the front lawn <laughs> and then say right just put back in the things that are really important to you and then and replace what's what's not important yeah. and there's an awful lot of crap <laughs> you know that, that's out that will be left out on that front lawn by the time you've done it because yeah. you sort of collect a load of things you collect a load of habits and I think if you take it out on a business sense and you look at the, you, know, you look at where we've been in the sort of norm and running in the same sort of instance, there are two things that really strike out about this, you know, what you've just said. Number one is 
you're moving into an, an into a marketplace that that is uh and, you know they're trying to find very similar to you know to, to the equities you know a couple of years so we've got some you know we've got some context here we've got a sort of plan and we know a little bit about what's happening in the marketplace the second thing is is that is that the way that we would traditionally have done that would be very different because there would be trade tech and various different shows and summits and and net, you know, physical networking events mm. so we look at it and say right what's the best way of selling it in that, in that sort of arena are we going to increase our our content to add value to companies are we going to make sure we're we're looking at uh, at, at video and technology and, and various other bits and pieces to it's you know, to tell that story we're we going to go out there and do exactly the same and or just uh, or hibernate and wait for things to, to be to be uh, better and, I, and i've been talking about this a lot recently the sort of companies who are on the offense rather than the defense in terms of their their approach to the marketplace now mm. offense to me in sales traditionally means being more aggressive making more calls and, and you know going after companies with with more uh, venom what I'm actually seeing offense as at the moment is being able to go in there and add more value and, and seek out more opportunities to, to really partner with companies and showcase how you can solve their problems. Now, to me, that seems to be very much the sort of uh, port of call for you and the route which you, which, which you guys are taking and doing it really, really well at the moment. Yeah. Is that something which you, you've seen as an advantage as well? The, the ability to do your job in a, in a particularly different way and, and uh, interact with your customers in a different way, or is it still making the best of a bad situation? Uh, well, <laughs> that's a good question, Tommy. I'm old school. You know me by now. I'm old school. <laughs> I, I do like my phone. I do like my uh, my meetings. And I do I do like to see people. But uh, but then yet again... Put the two together, though. And that, it's that hybrid thing, isn't it? You put the exactly. two of them together and you've got something which is, is far better, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So so I, I think the pandemic has learned and, and pushed us to adapt and change the way we do business, the way we uh, the way we look at things. Uh, the mentality has always been, though, I have to say, to work with a client is so much more valuable uh, in a partnership. Alone, alone, you're often a single island, and it doesn't mm. really help you. Uh, but working together has always been an, a, a strength. And especially when you work with client, uh, we are technicians, right? We we develop software. We 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 develop specialized software. And 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 uh, as I said to you before, uh, the, the privilege is that some of those engineers are the brilliant minds of 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 calculations and and uh, and 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 how math is driven, right? But we are not traders, and the only way to work in a very good relationship and bring out good software is to work with our clients and 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 if you work as a partner you can adapt and, uh, and adjust the software but we also adapt and adjust and the way we work with our clients uh the way we work as you said uh, to answer your question for once actually sorry toby i got distracted distracted quite often on <laughs> software right but never mind to answer your question yes it, it, it does change the behavior of we all have been working and reaching out to people i've started using linkedin i i never wore linkedin before right and and you're doing we, well on that <laughs> now you're in post and i'm, I'm a I'm fan i'm a fan <laughs> <laughs> you know it's 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 a different way but it's also a way that i think is important for any organization is to 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 push forward and and to to learn from what we i will never go back to the office as, as i used to be uh, mm. in, in the office at seven in the morning going home at uh, late at night we we don't we won't do that ever again i think it's, it's going to mm. change the way that we that we interact with people will the meetings be still held face to face i hope so mm. um will there be as many probably not we can probably do quite a lot over teams and and and, and skype or whatever we use right uh assume sorry that was the word i was looking for but mm -hmm. you know we can we can we can use that quite a lot and many of the non-essential meetings has been changed and that will change yeah. forever i think and it's yeah. more productive we we much more productive today than what we ever been i would say uh because you have all the you have all the tools around you and and you're focusing on what you're supposed to focus on and it's a very it's a very good time for this to have happened uh, yes. just in terms of the ability for you know for us to utilize that technology to you know to to adapt to it to thrive with it and you know, you know the uh, the accent of the zoom has really allowed us to, to sort of say right do we have you know is there is there a better way yeah. I think that's a really interesting uh, aspect of you know, to be able to look at this and come out of it with. 
and I, and I guess that comes into the space that you know which you're looking to uh, you know to, to, to serve at the mo at the moment in that fixed income world. You know, Volantic FSA provides a product here that can provide a better way. Tell us a, a little bit about some of the challenges that, that customers in the space are looking at at the moment, and how you guys are able to provide that solution to uh, to improve you know their their position and, and really you know add value to the industry at the moment. Because I think this is really interesting. So there is there is there is several several ways that we address the market. One of them is that through the mesh technology that I that I uh, that I mentioned before. Uh, today, um, many organizations are stuck in a single form of, of software suite, which doesn't really communicate with, well with others. They don't play well with others. Mm. So the data is distracted or dis, dis, uh, dispersed over several, several different systems. And where we help our clients is to, we're not yet there yet, but we're getting there. But what we're trying to do is to open up that you can take best of breed software, uh, integrate that best of breed software, but where you would like to uh, inject your own IP, inject or build your own apps, why not? Uh, you should be allowed to do so. And that keeps the vendors on the toes. And the ones that actually sells the stuck on systems, uh, they, won't, they won't be able to offer that. And that's not what the clients are looking for. The clients are today looking for um, uh, optimization. They're looking at at ways to centralize the data. Sorry for saying data a lot, but they're, they're looking for new ways of yeah, pushing. I think everyone is at the moment, aren't they? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, they are. But that that's that's one thing I say. I, I see another thing is that their workflows is changing. They're going more electronic. Uh, they're trying to harmonize the way that they're working. Uh, fixed income is also moving a little bit into what I call the equity-like workflows. Not all of them. Don't get me don't get me wrong. There is workflows that would always stick the way they are today, but many of them are moving towards an equity-like trading uh, methodology, if 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 my mind used that, which is a little bit agency. They take on. It's more difficult for them to take on risk. They take it. They can't take on risk on their books and as such, they would like to, but they can't take away the um, uh, order flow either. So they will take it on, they will hold it, and they will come into what I call the agency model, where, mm -hmm. they, where they actually start addressing, okay, I can't take my risk. I don't want to turn away my client. Now I want it all together. Yeah. And that changes the operation of the systems that they use, not the persons that are using the technology, but the way that the message management on the back end starts actually to communicate. And that is the challenge I see the industry is going through. Uh, as I said, not all parts of the industry, but a big part of the industry. We see that in, 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 in rates, we see it in, in, in repos, we see it in swaps. Uh, so we see that, that there are movements and questions, but the only way to address questions is actually by ask, asking the questions, then we yeah. can start talking about. Do you know what I miss the most, Toby? Go on. <laughs> it's actually the whiteboard. I love my whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> to take the I'm whiteboard. I'm just... surprised you haven't replaced the. I mean, that is that is without question the best fitting bookshelf I've seen in 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 fintech throughout this whole period. I mean, yes. every book has got a place but it's going to have to be removed and put a whiteboard behind you isn't it exactly exactly <laughs> we need a whiteboard can can't zoom in the guys build a whiteboard for us because i love my whiteboard it's it's where you take a client's problem you look at it and you just throw it on a whiteboard and yeah. you look at flow by flow and once you started yeah. looking at flow by flow then suddenly you optimize them this yeah. is the way. And then you ask the trader, what would you actually like to achieve? Because there's two discussions to a, to a conversation, as so. to say. Very there's two so. coins of that, uh, two sides of that coin. Sorry, <laughs> that came out wrong. But you have <laughs> two sides, right? You have the trader that has, he needs to optimize his time, his trading patterns, and the data and information that he has at his disposal to make the right decisions. Yeah. Then you have us, the geeks on the back end, that actually needs to, to fix what he needs to get done, right? But for him to push a button, 
uh, there's quite a lot of, of stuff going on in the back end, right? It's yeah. not just a single straight through process. And, and that's what we're trying to achieve. And that's yeah. what you what you get when you start actually modeling this on a whiteboard. So, sorry, coming back to the whiteboard. <laughs> yeah. Move away from it. I, th I think exactly. this, is in, yeah, this, this to me is the, is the crux. And, and look, there's 300 companies who are listed in the financial technologist uh, mm. um, magazines list this, this year of companies that we think are going to, um, and we, yeah, we've worked with, um, as, you, as you know, EY and Beringa and Lloyd's Banking Group and all these businesses to basically identify, you know, that, that shortlist. And I think this is a, this is a seminal year. It's our biggest list that we've done four or five years into, into producing this. Mm. And it's the biggest list we've done because I think there's so much that's going to happen this year. And there's so many companies that need light thrown onto them because it, it is a, um, it's a seminal time for what's happening in, in the marketplace. I've been talking a lot recently about the golden thread. What is it that, that sort of, you know, uh, combines all of these companies? What combines the companies who are growing, uh, doing different things, adding value? And one of the principal things that you've just highlighted there is, is saying that they are looking at genuine industry problems and they're providing real solutions that work with, you know, to optimize the time of people using them. And it will be optimizing time. It will be optimizing cost. It will be reducing friction. These are the things that there, which which are the, the general issues that people are looking for, yeah. uh, and and how and, and companies that get that right, genuinely get that right, and are solving the you know the, the, the true issues and, and providing real efficiencies in the marketplace. In my mind, they won't just see grow this year, but you'll see explode. Hmm. I've seen companies over the last uh, you know I've been speaking to a lot over the last couple of weeks. And they're reporting the last year, seeing them grow by 100%, 200%, 300%. Significant, significant numbers, both in terms of headcount, but also in terms of revenue. Um, and the two put together are obviously the, uh, you know, the mecca of where we, where we, where we want to be. <laughs> yeah. um, but when you, look at, you know, when you look at what's happened through that period that we've, that we've seen over the course of the last year, and you think, right, okay, adding this to it, I think what we can be looking at is some numbers there that dwarf those sort of figures in terms of where people can go and what, what sort of uh, numbers we're going to see in terms of growth over the next year, because it is a very, very exciting time. Mm. It is a market that is ripe for, for absolute disruption. We've spoken about this in the, in the past and in, in our recent debate show, I know it sort of came up. This is real time for real innovation. It is a market event, you know, a world economic event that, that, is, uh, that has lit the fuse of digital innovation within the financial services markets. Yeah. They've risen up to it spectacularly. They've seen a different way of working and they're, they're hungry to, you know, to really um, gather and gain those efficiencies that are going to take them further forward. And I think it's businesses like yours doing innovative things that can add real value that are really going to be at the forefront and the crest of, of, of what that comes to, you know, to look forward to. So let's move on to that and, and look at the future of, of Volantic FSA and, and, and what you're trying to do. You, you've, uh, you've started growing out the team. Uh, you're backed by, as you say, a, a great company to do some amazing things as a as a startup business. Give us a little bit about what 2021 looks like for the company, some of the priorities, some of the things that you're looking to achieve, and, and what your predictions are for Volantic in the UK over the next couple of years. <laughs> okay, that's um, trying to take my crystal ball out here. But, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I, I have to say we are, uh, one of the, the, the core strengths uh, of, of Volantic is, is the people. It's a people's business. It's yeah. uh, it's people that is excellent. Our leadership is excellent, and uh, I have a, a, a the privilege of working with these people and and to take them internationally. Uh, what are the challenges? The challenges is to continue to deliver the top quality software that we that we are delivering to the financial industry today, but also to modernizing it into modernizing, that's, that's actually the wrong word, but actually adapting it, if, if that makes sense, uh, it's a better word to use, adapting it into what has changed in the industry and that the changes we discussed, that's the challenge that I see to be able to adapt to all the changes that you have in the industry, especially around repos and swaps and, and, mm. and, and, and so on. Uh, and we can do that. We, Technology-wise, we can do that. We are we are on top of that. How are we growing out the team? I, I see Valantic FSA being uh, uh, going from being the challenger in this industry the, the, to become the leader in this industry. Uh, there, don't don't get me wrong. There is great softwares, other great softwares out there, uh, but. I'm not seeing any other looking at the way that Valantic is looking at it. 
by opening up and actually exposing ourselves in a, in a, in a way, because opening up your software stack, allowing clients to develop themselves, will keep you on your toes, <laughs> because if you're not delivering, it's just literally being taken out. And that is different. Uh, so how do we how do we operate uh, our team? I've seen we're going to grow the, the team extensively. We, we 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 just today actually onboarded one of our uh, first new sales pre- uh, persons here in in in, in London. The second employee of Atlantic FSA UK, uh, I'm proud to say. Doubled in uh, size already. <laughs> we doubled in size already. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we are um, we're taking on a third one, uh, probably within this quarter. Yeah. We are bringing in a, a, a product manager that uh, that will allow us to um, allow us to actually document better client requirements out of the UK. Uh, and then communicating back to uh, to our uh, excellent engineering team in, in, in Germany. Uh, once we've done that, we're probably going to hopefully go into the office, actually. <laughs> That's one thing. I'm, I'm, the day they open up that office, I'm going to stand at the door, <laughs> shaking it up. Um, uh, what else are we doing? We, we're going to continue to spread our brand name internationally and continue to work with our clients. Um, I see, uh, as I said before, I see us to go from being the challenger to the leader uh, in the in the fixed income trading space. Uh, it's an interesting space to be in. Uh, uh, as I said uh, initially, I'm very privileged to have been with this market for so many years, and 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 yeah. and uh, as I said, move met brilliant people, uh, great minds of, of, of technology and trading. Uh, so that's what we do. <laughs> but but uh, and, and, and continue on to be in this industry is just a privilege. And, uh, and uh, to continue to work with my clients is also uh, the biggest privilege of them all. And doing yeah. so with a, co- a company such as Valantic is it's one of the biggest privileges out there. It's, uh, yeah. it's, 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 it's a challenge. Will it be easy? Nothing is easy in life. It's it's always easy to turn around and say, oh, that's so difficult. But it isn't. Just look at it differently. Attack the problem differently. Yeah. Try to solve it. We, uh, we're we coming out, as I said before, we're coming out with brand new marketing material. Uh, we, we're working with the, some of the best in the industry to do so. Yeah. Uh, we are, uh, we are uh, looking at things in a new way. We... Uh, uh, the future is going to be it's going to be great it's going to be fun it's it's uh, it's uh, that's the advantages of of our our group ceo he he allows us to have fun and it, it is fun it should be fun to work yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's uh, that's the the, the the biggest challenges i think for senior management is to make it fun for their employees to be be part of something and yeah. valantic is more than something it's a family uh, it's it, it's it's a great company I, I've, I've heard. I love. I love that. Um, just you know, that, that passion snuck out again for you. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> and, it, and it's uh, and it and it's great to release it. But it's uh, so that happens. You know, you can tell the engagements there. You can tell the excitements there. You can see the scale and scope of the opportunity. Mm. Everything I've ever heard about Joachim and and uh, uh, and the business has been really positive. I've spoken to a number of people since you know since we we were speaking first about Valantic and uh, you just get great feedback every single you know university every time you, you hear about it and that. Yeah, that's very close to my heart. That whole concept of of work being fun. You know, one of my big bugbears is you know people who are averse uh, to to waking up on a Monday or and you know waiting for Hump Day, Wednesday, and Friday at the end of the end of the week. You know, work should be something there which you're as passionate as you very clearly are are about the sort of scale and scope of the opportunity. And and fun comes from you know shaking up an industry. Fun comes from doing something great and and having something there which you can get as excited and enthusiastic about as you, as you have. And I love I just love hearing this whole last half hour or so if you've just been absolutely um you know very cl- very clearly in love with the mission of what you're what you're trying to do at the moment it's great to hear it for people who are listening peter and and, and have, have, have sort of leaned in and, and caught your ear with with regards to the, the sort of revolution that you're creating at the moment what's the best way of them uh, getting in touch with you uh, they can they can reach me uh, they can reach me of course via linkedin they can they can uh via our website they can they can they can join any any forum that we're on uh, and get in contact with me more than happy to to speak to anybody uh, uh, they don't need to come to us to buy something they can come to us to discuss problems that they have with the workflow maybe we can maybe we can't help them and i'm sure we can help them 
but they shouldn't feel any pressure. We are uh, actually a, a, a prospect that I spoke to uh, the other day uh, actually said to me, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, we might not be buying from you. And I, I asked him, if we don't talk, we can't, we can't help each other out. And yeah. just by talking, we're learning. And, uh, and it's all about learning, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Learning about their problems, their workflows and how they can be addressed. Yeah. And and uh, as I said, uh, my, my longest sales pitch was actually 15 years over two, di three different companies. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it took me three companies to sell to them. But Play the long game. Play the exactly. Long game they, they, the they become very dear friends of mine, the people that I've yeah. been working on, uh, with. And uh, and and uh, and uh, it's uh, it's it's just a pleasure every time. Right. And <laughs> once again, it's it's, it's a long game. It's a uh, it's. This industry is all about taking time and understanding. It's uh, it's uh, it's not a fast moving uh, industry. Yeah. We have fast moving technology that is pushing the door, though. So uh, yeah. so you better get on the train. I almost said uh, because the train <laughs> is actually leaving the platform, right? and the ones that are not getting on the train, they 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 will have the chance. The train will come back. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you'll be behind you it. You'll be behind it already, won't you? And that's yeah, you know, exactly. we've we've been saying this, and this has sort of become more and more relevant every time I've heard it, particularly over the last couple of weeks, is is I don't think there's ever been a stage where standing still is moving you further backwards. And I know it's no. a cliche in terms yeah. of where it is, but, it, but particularly with the evolution of technology and how some companies have really embraced that over the course of the last couple of years, mm. that, that sort of step further forward, that playing on the offense has never been more important. And, and I love the fact that you guys have created something there, which which I think absolutely does that and really moves everything further forward to, you know, mm. to a whole new level. So. Peter, it, it's always a pleasure, um, but particularly so when, when we're hearing you talk about you know, this and, and this new baby of yours and, uh, and, and quite, quite about how high potential the opportunity truly is because it's, it, it is exceptional. It is hugely exciting. Every time I hear you talk about it, I get myself excited about the scam. <laughs> you can come and join us, don't you? Come and join us. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. But, uh, Listen, it, it's, it's just fantastic to do it. And, and thanks so much for joining us on the show today and, and uh, giving us a bit more insight into Atlantic FSA and everything you've been doing. I wish you nothing uh, but the very best of luck. And I'm sure you're not even going to need it because it's, uh, it's a great story. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's actually a privilege. Thank you very much for having me, Toby. Absolute pleasure. And thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon on another episode of FinTech Focus TV. Thanks a lot.